I'm looking through the paper trying to find the right symbol for you. Um, I guess we've got two choices. We've got phi, which is the order parameter. Um, and that's quite important for this work. But probably the most important thing in this work is, is just how hard we're shaking it. And that's the amplitude, A. So I think probably a capital A. When I'm building just a, like a cell, um, it's a box. I'm building a box. And we're going to put glass beads, basically sand, in the box. I've got a whole range of different boxes. So this one obviously is, is a square box. I have a long thin box, bigger boxes. Over there I've got some, some glass boxes as well, which are quite nice. The box I'm making is the box we used for our recent publication, um, which is a result I'm pretty excited to, to show you because it really speaks a lot about the kind of physics that we do down here and, and why it's interesting. Well, what we've got here is just a, a piston. It's a shaker. Um, we play a sound wave into it, and it, the amplifier turns that into a vibration. And that's what we're going to use to shake the sand up and down. These are little glass beads, so silicate uh, beads, which I've sieved to get the right size, and then we've cleaned them. So what's lovely, let me just turn that around, is that they really they look like a liquid, and they flow like a liquid. So we're not so poor as we can't afford proper funnels and cones, but the paper one is, is brilliant. It works so well. And when it gets dirty, you can just make another one. So. And then it's just a question of putting a lid on. And it turns out, for this experiment, the lid's incredibly important, not least because all the particles would fly everywhere without the lid. This is just a little box which generates a signal. So it's generating a 60 hertz signal, which you can't see. There we are, that's a 60 hertz signal. For those of you who remember your high school maths, what I want is a sine wave. Okay, so this is a sine wave signal, and I'm going to put that through an amplifier. This is not much different to a stereo at home, just produces um, much more current, so more power for the piston. And then that goes out the back and into the piston. And what this sine wave that we have on the screen, we get on the piston as well. So a typical setup for this experiment is to start with a nice homogeneous distribution of the particles. So there's no special place in the tray. It's the same everywhere. And when I switch it on very gently, when I'm shaking it very, very gently, just by turning this dial here, and we can see that the, the particles turn from being stuck to the bottom to being a gas of particles. So if you think about the air in this room, it's just a bunch of molecules, oxygen and nitrogen and carbon dioxide and a few other trace elements, just bouncing around, bouncing off each other. And all of those molecules are at equilibrium with the walls, the temperature of the walls, and the radiation from the lights and from the sunlight. Um, and that's what defines their temperature and their velocity. In this system, what we've got is a bunch of particles which are being vibrated up and down. They're forming a gas. And, well, they don't really have such a thing as a, a temperature, because temperature is something we define at equilibrium. That means that they're balanced with the walls. This can't be balanced with the walls because the walls are shaking up and down so hard that there's no such thing as, as equilibrium. Instead, what we have is a thing called steady state. So what that means is that the velocity of the particles, the, the, the nature of the gas, the temperature, if you like, um, is given not by an equilibrium with the walls, but with an energy balance where the amount of energy lost in the collisions between particles is the same as the amount of energy that the shaking base is putting in. Now this is where this starts to get really interesting and this is really what the paper that we've just published is all about. As I turn up how hard I'm shaking this, so I'm just going to shake it harder and harder and harder, what we're going to see, here we go, there's a little bit of physics magic coming up here. Shake it harder, There it is. OK, so that's quite bizarre. Because if you think about the gas in a room, when it's at equilibrium, it certainly doesn't suddenly all collect in one corner of the room. If that happened, we'd all be doomed to suffocate randomly when the gas collected. So this is behaving like a gas, but not really. Because it's all collecting up in one corner as we shake it harder. Now, if I shake it even harder, here we go, and take it up. You can see it's getting, you can hear that it's getting harder. And eventually, 
we go back to a nice homo homogeneous distribution again. Well, what's going on is at low amplitudes of oscillation, when we're not shaking it very hard, then the particles are moving around chaotically and they're acting like a gas. So we can talk about the temperature of the particles and we can understand the physics in terms of it simply being a gas. But when we start, start to shake it really hard, then everything changes. And this was a real surprise because nobody had considered this before. And what happens is, instead of moving around randomly, the particles all start to move around just as a plane of, of a single block moving up and down. And this, this coherent motion has a much higher temperature in terms of granular temperatures uh, than, than the gas had before. And so there's a jump. This, there's a, an immediate step when the particles go from being chaotically driven to being coherently driven, where the temperature just goes up hugely. And that change in temperature does something really quite bizarre. It, it forces a region where if you get more particles in one cluster, the pressure goes down. Now that's counterintuitive. Normally when you get more stuff, the pressure goes up. Just think about, well I was going to say think about the police kettling protesters, but maybe not a very good example. Um, <laughs> think about, you know, you just squeeze a gas, it gets hotter. But in this case, when you put more particles in, the pressure goes down. But what that means is that because the pressure has gone down, more particles want to go there. And so the more particles that go there, the lower the pressure gets, and then more particles rush in because the pressure is low. And eventually, you rebalance the whole system with loads of particles all clustered into one space and a whole region of nothingness going on around it. So this is really bizarre because what I started out by talking about is chaotic motion of particles. This is chaos dynamics. It's a region of physics which is quite well understood, very interesting region of physics. And what I end up talking about is more the random motion of particles and statistical uh, mechanics. And this is a completely separate area of physics. The area that we're looking in, the area of, of parameter space that we're looking in, this density of particles, um, this size of box, is very specific. And it, we, we found it. We were lucky. That's the truth of it. Um, it would have been very, very easy to miss it. It would have been very easy to simply assume we'd done the experiment wrong. Because the reality is that you look at this experiment and you think, OK, well, it's most likely that we've got it slanted. And so all of the particles are flowing down the slope. And we spent a long time. These bolts are a way of making sure that the experiment is completely level. We spent a long time with a spanner and a, a, a spirit level just trying to make sure that this experiment was completely level. And once we were completely convinced, we did the experiment again, and the bubble comes again. And in fact, if you do the experiment in a computer simulation, then the bubble still comes. And the computer simulation is, of course, definitely flat. You, you can know that that's flat. So um, we're pretty confident that this is a real effect. It, it, of course, it happens in nature. Shock waves due to resonances between particles are all over the place. Um, even when an organ is playing a note, it's a shock wave traveling down the tube of the organ. It's basically the same piece of physics as we're looking at here. Um, but in an organ pipe, there's not room for the separation. Granular dynamics in general, it's not a good conversation piece for parties because people look at it and think, well, that's really quite dull. Um, but actually, it's everywhere. It's everywhere from grain silos for farmers to ingredients for pharmaceutical companies, uh, ingredients for food companies. You don't really want a pizza, which is all tomato and, and no anchovy. Um, or maybe you do. Um, it's, it's also in space, the smaller bodies in the solar system, things like asteroids and moons and the dust on the surface of the moon, these are all granular systems, sand dunes. I can keep naming examples all day. As a pure physicist, not thinking about applications, not worrying about that sort of thing, but just interested in the equations and what's going on, this is really fantastic. And yes, we're at the beginning of a subject, so we don't really see its applications. But the applications will follow because nobody would doubt that the applications of thermodynamics are definitely there. And give this another five or 10 years, there'll be applications. There's no worries about that.